Welcome to The Business Coach, a show in which you'll help entrepreneurs better their businesses. My name is Ian Dennis and tonight on the show we're going to be exploring a business that's literally every girl's dream, the bridal gown business. On the first half of the show I'm going to be meeting up with a lady named Sharon Laporte who runs Top Honoras. I want to find out her journey in this business and what exactly are some of the challenges she faces in her day-to-day -day business. And after the break I'm going to be linking up Sharon to Maureen Wenaina, the founder of White Rose Bridal, to give her nuggets of wisdom on how to go about this particular business. So welcome to the show. <laughs> Hi Sharon. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having Quite me. What a beautiful floral dress. Thank you. Who are you dressed by? I'm dressed by Topanora's Top Bridal Boutique. Interesting. They have dressed yourself, literally. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Quite interesting. The first question I like knowing about each and every entrepreneur I have on the show is the why. Why did you decide to set up the bridal gown business? What exactly inspired you? I got the desire after assisting my friend uh, plan for her wedding. Actually, I was one of the bridesmaids. And I think the hassle, like we went to look for the gown like in three different areas. Then we had to go look for material for our dresses. We had to go look for a fundi. We had to go look for shoes. So I think the hassle of going uh, around uh, made me feel that I can do it also. I can do it like even for another bride or for someone else, another friend. So I decided maybe why not uh, get a business and then have all these things at one place. How did you transition from now just being an idea to setting up an actual business in this? Mm, funny thing is that it was an idea for quite a while. <laughs> How long was it? The wedding was in 2015, but now I got to register my business one year later. As in just registering, not starting it, yeah. registering. I looked for so many names, like you go do a name search, it already exists. Mm -hmm. you, you, like you get a name, it doesn't sound so bright on yeah, so finally, <laughs> so I. So, why to Pandora, by the way? Why did you decide to name your business that? It's going to. Most people think it's a Latin name yes. or a Spanish name, you know, Topanora. Yeah. Oh. But actually, those are my names, yeah. like Sharon Apot, when you read it the other way around. <laughs> I sat down, I looked for so many names. That's kind of interesting. That's the best yeah. I could come up with. So, Topanora. Okay, you're telling me about now, you've registered the business, so yeah. how is it now, the process? I thought, first I thought you just register a business, then while everything happens. I didn't have like quite a very good plan. I had the vision, but I didn't know how to plan myself out. So the following year, I decided, why not start shopping? I tried to ask around, you know, bridal shops, where do you get your gowns, yeah. this and this. Did they tell you? I was Did getting only yeah. hints, you know, from Facebook business groups and all, because I didn't personally know someone who does it. I think I should have looked for a mentor by then, someone who could walk with me the journey. So I tried to ask around, you know, people are giving me hints, you know, China, UK, you know, just import. I thought it was as easy as that. Yeah. So I tried to get my first gown. Um, I made inquiries about shipping and all. So I got my first gowns. So why, where did you start? Ooh, I went, I went online. You know, you like you Google, you make yeah. Google your friend. So I shopped my first gowns. Yeah. They were, I remember them very well. There were two. You know, I was told if you buy one, it's very expensive because shipping will just get up for that one day. Yeah. So you rather buy a bit. More. You buy more. Yeah. And you know, since I had not planned myself very well, I did not have the finances to just buy like bulk, yeah. like buy ten dresses. I still didn't have the skill. I didn't know what to look for when you're going to buy the dresses. I tried. So just to just put I a just, yeah. bridal dress that you used No, I just know. went and looked. I saw all these dresses concerned the Kinoi, I can sell it for this much. Yeah. Then you know I buy these two, then I sell, then I buy four. Yeah. You know, I sell like yeah, the profit head, I buy in, in your head it's making No, sense. those those are the calculations yeah. I was making. Uh, but so your ground a <laughs> ground people who are different. Funny thing, I still have those two dresses. Oh, the ones that you first got from your first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As yeah. you These China, China guys will finish us. <laughs> I didn't know, like, first you have to check the supplier, get to know what kind of dress. You know, like, sometimes you look at a dress, you're like, I this dress is very cheap. If yeah. I buy it, I'll come here, well, make, make a kill. Profits, but they have never moved. What was the problem with the dress? I didn't know, like, the less you spend on a dress, the less the quality. Ah. 
the more you spend on a dress, the better the quality. You have you had set up shop before, because right now you told me you don't have a shop, but you would set up shop before. So take me through the experience, how exactly was it and why did you decide to close down? The funny thing with bridal business, you can't do it online. Yeah. A bride would want to come and feel the dress, get the experience, feel if they'll be, you know, like comfortable in the dress, then they buy it. Yeah. So I remember that my first sale, actually I didn't have a shop. How did you go about it? So I. I had a friend who was having a wedding. Yeah. We spoke. I told her what I do. Then she was willing to, oh, to take the risk. Take the risk. And was, I was it worth it? It was. Yeah. So as in, I was also ready. Like you know, like you, you shop for a dress, but you can back up. Kukiumana nimrudishie pesa. So I got two dresses. Yeah. Most dresses, like they come with the measurements, but you have to do adjustments. adjustments kidogo. Yeah. Sometimes maybe the bust you have to tengeneza kidogo the waist. Luckily enough, the, it was a ball gown. It doesn't. Okay, it's not you like a mermaid. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, for a ball gown, yeah. it fits up to this place. Then yeah. it, it. Oh, it goes around. It around goes around, uh, yeah. And a mermaid. Mermaid, it fits your figure. Oh. So you know, for a mermaid, it doesn't fit. Like you have to make it fit. So yeah. it's it will need may, maybe more, much more, because you know, like the hip sizes are normally different for oh. different body shapes and different body sizes. The interesting thing about you is that you juggle between both employment and also you, you do business. How do you manage to do that? Because you're working for one of the biggest telecommunications company here. So how do you manage to juggle between now work and business? How is it? It's really tough. Yeah. It hasn't been an easy journey. Um, till recently, I've, I've even considered like having a partner for the business. Because I'm employed. I need to give like my 100% when I'm at work. There's no reason that I can give to walk out of work and, and to go tend to the business. So I have to do it outside the eight hours, yeah. my off days. Yeah. And uh, the inter what's your model in terms of how you're running your business? Do you literally just sell the gowns? Do you list them? How do you go about it? I've tried to list like maybe once or twice, but I can't say I, I really liked, liked the experience. Why, why was that? Because you know now the um, the if I'm supposed to, if I'm to give uh, someone else that gown that was already released, it's normally not in that condition that it was. Oh, it was there. before. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you prefer you just literally sell. I prefer selling. Sell. All right. yeah. What exactly has been some of the challenges you've been facing in this beer share? Oh, balancing between work and and uh, business, because I really have never gotten someone who can like stand in for me fully, yeah. like. Taking the business the way I would have taken it. Are the people you have been employing the at your shop? The people I've been employing. Uh -huh. yeah. I take so much time to advertise. Yeah. Like I'm always posting on Facebook. The, oh, which media have yeah. you been advertising? I've been mediums? using Facebook uh -huh. and word of mouth yeah. and also my friends. Uh -huh. yeah. And the final question, like asking, also just closing down the show with, is that you as an entrepreneur and uh, the owner of your business, how would you like to take it in the next couple of years? What's your dream like? My dream is to have a one-stop bridal shop, as in just to have everything a bride to, uh, can walk in with the bridesmaids and the mother and everyone and I'm able to, you know, give them whatever they need. Their dreams are valid. It will come to pass. I All believe the best. so. Thank you. <laughs> Quite an interesting conversation there with Sharon. So after the break, I'm going to be linking up Sharon to Maureen of White Rose that have been in business for quite a while for her to share some nuggets of wisdom about this wedding gown business. So don't touch that dial, but keep it right here on The Business Coach where we help entrepreneurs better their businesses.